good to be in the Lord's house this morning. It's good to feel the Spirit of God. The Lord laid this scripture on our heart this morning in the book of John. Y'all pray for us this morning as we just try to do exactly what the Lord would have us to. The book of John in the 19th chapter. It's been said here this morning, uh, the devil's been trying to tell me, well, you're only reading this because it's Easter time and this is the Easter message, but uh, this is exactly what the Lord had had us on our hearts. I, I don't try to do what tradition tells me to do. I just try to do what the Lord has me has me to do because that's the only way I know how to do it. If I try to get up here myself, I just stand here and say, uh, I'm not, I'm not much of a person. I'm, I'm very shy and backwards, and I, I can't hardly, I can't hardly look at you without getting nervous. And every time I stand before a crowd, I get nervous. Even stand in front of one person, I get nervous. The only way I know how to do this, even from the start, to when the Lord called me to preach, all I know to do is just come up here and let the Lord have His way. Yeah. So let's pray here this morning as we've tried to do and we've succeeded. For, from such is letting the Lord have His way this morning, as that's all I know how to do it. And the book of John in the 19th chapter, I want to start, uh, uh, I believe, in the 28th verse. And then it says, uh, in the book of John in the 19th chapter, starting in the 28th verse, it says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, uh, uh, that the Scripture might be fulfilled, saith I thirst. Uh, now there was a set a, a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and uh, put it on a hyssop uh, and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, uh, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And I just want to stop reading right there for a minute. And I know it's just a, a short verses in this whole uh, uh, the passage here, but this is what the Lord's laid on our heart. Uh, and I love the details that's in the Scripture. And I, I, I try, when I try to read the Scriptures, I try to, I, I try to read the little details because it's important uh, not to skim over the little words that's in the Scriptures. We, we try to just look at the big parts. Uh, but if we just look at the big parts, we'll miss the precious little parts. Uh, and in the 28th verse, it says, uh, uh, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, uh, He knew exactly what He needed to do, even from the very start. Uh, I began to think about the, the life of Jesus when He comes uh, as just a little baby, and we think how uh, uh, innocent and uh, 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 thinking of the word, you know, ignorant. Uh, you know, they don't know any better. Sometimes, you when we know when we were kids, we do things that, and we don't know any better. And our parents would have to scold us and say, "Don't do that." Yeah. But I believe with all my heart uh, that Jesus, even as uh, as a child, uh, He knew what He was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe uh, we read in the scriptures as He's a child, He sat uh, with the 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 uh, the, uh, the political and the, the spiritual leaders at that yeah. time. Uh, we read how He was sitting in the temples and they marveled at. Yeah. Him. And what he do as a child, yeah. uh, and even going on through uh, all the way till he died, was on that cross. Yeah. Uh, he knew exactly yeah. what needed to be fulfilled, yeah. and he didn't do it. He didn't do it for himself. He didn't, he, he didn't need it. He didn't need that for himself. He didn't come uh, and live that life and die on the cross to say, "Well, this is for me." He didn't need that glory. He done had it. He didn't need that glory saying, look at me. He done had it in heaven. But He left His glory that He might do it for us. Amen. Thank you. That love that He had for us. And I 
I begin to think of the uh, through the service today, the scripture that's been read, uh, especially through Sunday school, talking about uh, dropping down to Thomas where the, the disciples, even throughout uh, throughout the whole scriptures we read as the disciples, uh, they just didn't know. Yeah. It was pointing before them as we read the scriptures. Sometimes we scratch our head and say, I, I don't understand. It was right in front of their face. How come they didn't believe? Yeah. And you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's hard for us to believe because you know, we weren't there. Well, we thought well, they were there. They've seen it firsthand. Why didn't yeah. they believe? Yeah. yeah. But it was hid from them. Yeah. And we read in the scriptures uh, this morning how uh, Jesus, you know, he wasn't in the tomb, but he told them time and time again. He said that uh, the the, uh, the Son of Man is going to hang on the cross. They're going to. Uh, in my words, he said, they're going to hang me and they're going to kill me uh, and I'm going to rise on the third day. Uh, uh, but they still didn't believe. Amen. They, they Amen. still couldn't wrap it in their heads. Yep. But then it said that they believed. Yep. But yet I believe that they, maybe a little part of them, they, just, they, they still couldn't believe it. <laughs> they, they, had, they had Jesus there. They thought they'd always have Him there. But he told him, he said, but yet a little while I won't be here. Yeah. But praise God, he, he come back. And I thought about the patience that Jesus had. Yeah. Though, the, though the disciples, they didn't believe. Yeah, uh, John uh, that says that the, uh, the disciples whom Jesus loved, that's John as he come. Uh, he said, uh, he, when he looked in there and seen the neck, he says, he believed. Then they left. Went back to her own home. But I said, thinking about Mary Magdalene there and how, how she stayed and she wept. Yep. I don't think she fully believed. She still thought that they, they run away with Jesus. They, they took Him. Yep. Weren't they taken? But then she looked, she looked in the tomb, but the disciples didn't see the angels. But she did. Yep. And then when you know, Jesus yep. came, she still thought it was the gardener. But it was Jesus. Yeah, he he yeah, spoke, yeah. spoke her name. Yeah. She realized who it was. Yeah, yeah. She realized who it was. Yeah, he, was. he gave her that reassurance. Yeah. He could have said, well, if you ain't going to believe, then forget about it. You're just not going to believe. Yeah. Me. But he, he had that patience and that yeah, love yeah. saying, I'm going to reveal myself to her unlike anybody else has done it before. He'll do that to us. Yes, he will. And then thinking about Thomas and the, well, the other disciples, he came, uh, he came and he spoke to them and said, Peace be unto you. And he revealed himself uh, with the, the scars in his hand and the, the piercing on his side. And he revealed and said, Peace be unto you. He, he wants to give us that peace. Though sometimes we don't believe, sometimes it, it, it takes a, 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 for him to jerk an knot in our tail for us to believe. But he has that, he has that patience. And he said, I want you to believe. And he has that love. And I thought about Thomas. And he said, Unless, unless I, I touch him, put my put my hands into the, in his scars and thrust my hand inside, I won't believe. And Jesus came that next yeah. time. He said, here I am, Thomas. Amen. Do what you need to do to believe. You know, I'm, I'm right here for you to believe me. And he believed. He didn't even have to touch you. He said, Lord, my Lord, my God. He believed. <laughs> That Amen. patience that Amen. Jesus had. We'll get back into the Scriptures. How, how the patience that He has for us. Uh, and that though sometimes we, it takes us just a little while. Sometimes uh, we won't fully believe at first. But He said, I'm here. Uh, and I gave you my Scripture. Uh, and He said, peace I give to you that you can come uh, and have that peace. You just got to believe. And I like that in the scriptures. He said, uh, on down, he said that, uh, that when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He wasn't, he, uh, nobody could take his life, but he gave it freely. Amen. We know that with the bottom of our heart. No, nobody could take the life, but he gave it down freely. Just for us. Uh, and I like that. Uh, he said, it is finished. You know, he, he didn't have to say that. No. He could have just gave up the ghost. No, he he could have just he could have just thought that in his mind and just said, you know, 
it's done. I think I've done all I can do. Just, just gave up. The, but he said that. He said that. And praise Amen. God, I'm glad it was recorded in the scriptures, knowing that, that it's not nothing that we could have done. Uh, there's nothing that we could have finished it. Uh, there's nothing that we can finish in this life to get yep. that peace or that salvation. But it is because of Jesus Christ. And what he yep. done. And he said, I have finished Amen. it for you. Yeah. He finished it for us. Amen. There's nothing that we could have done. You know, as you said, brother, there's nothing that will hold it back in that tomb. But there was nothing that we could have done. But only, only through what He's done, the fulfillment of the Scriptures, that He came He said, I finished it for you. Amen. There's no way that we could have. Uh, there's no. Uh, there's no righteousness. See, I thought about the, in the beginning uh, 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 of when uh, the, the uh, at the, the beginning of time when Adam and Eve sinned, it started uh, uh, where they have to sacrifice animals. Uh, they have to come at a time, and they they had to skip. Uh, they had a. Uh, in my words, they had to schedule a time and they made the, the law that uh, they had to come and uh, uh, specific animals for the specific sins. And they had to, they had to do it uh, by the jot and tail of the law and you had to do it a, a specific way uh, to try to get your sins forgiven. Amen. Just that blood of that animal just to, just to get you skimmed by till next year. Just a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't much. It, it couldn't get you all the way. It just just barely gets you by. That blood of that, that animal. Amen. But praise God, it was finished. We, didn't, we don't need that no more. We don't have to come and sacrifice animals. We don't have to come and hoop and holler and do, do wild traditions anymore. We don't have to do those things because Jesus said it's Us. Yes. And I love that in his, in his prayer to God. 
as he was as he was he was in agony in the garden. I believe that's when those sins started weighing on him. He started feeling our guilt, yeah. ever sin that we've ever committed, ever yeah. sin that ever been committed on this yeah. earth. Yeah. And I thought of some of the evil people in this earth. Yeah. You know, the many in history we read would just say, "I, I just don't understand how cruel them people can be." Jesus died for them. Amen. Jesus uh, bore that that sin on on his back as he was on that cross. I, you know, we we think about in the scriptures the the scars and the agony when they whipped him. The the the, the cat of nine tails, uh, uh, those razors that hit his skin, and the, the crown of thorns on his head, and the the uh, the, the hairs plucked from his beard. And the, how painful that must have been! That physical pain. But that wasn't nothing compared uh, uh, to the pain that he went through bearing that sin for us. Amen. Just think of it. We, you know, we, we might just sin a little bit. Mm -hmm. But just think about all the sin in the whole world was placed in his back. And he died for us. Mm -hmm. He loved us. And he finished that for us. Uh, and I thought about in this his his uh, his uh, his prayer to uh, to God and his father in heaven, he says this, uh, he said it and, and we find it with him. And now, Father, O oh, Father, glorify me with with thine own self, within the glory with uh, uh, which I had with thee before the world. Uh, I think I skipped it back. It says, uh, "You pray for me here." And it says, uh, "It says, uh, and this uh, uh, is the eternal uh, life that they might know thee only, uh, the true God and uh, Jesus Christ, whom thou sent." Yeah, I think. Uh, I think it was before there right here in the second verse is thou hast given him power over all flesh. Now he's, had, he's got power over all flesh. Uh, there's nothing holding him back uh, that he should give eternal life to as many uh, as uh, thou hast given him. Amen. As many as thou hast given him. He gave him power. What? Over all flesh. Amen. Over all flesh. You don't just pick and choose, say, I want you, 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 forget about you, forget about, I don't want you. Oh, over all flesh. Amen. You know, a lot of times we want to think, well, it's just the good people that get to go to heaven. Or it's just the good people that that, uh, that Jesus speaks to their heart. No, it's all flesh. Amen. It don't matter you what, you, what you've said, what you've done, who you are. Jesus loves you. Yeah, and he Lord. finished it. He went all the way just for me. Just for me. Just for all of us. And he done that for all of us. He said it is finished. And he done that just for us. That we might have eternal life. That we might live. And we, you know, while we love thinking about heaven. And one of these days we'll get to go there. But it don't just start then. You know, you know that, that that glory, that that, that peace that He gives to us. Uh, I love that in the Scripture when He comes to disciples. He said He breathed on them and gave them the Holy Ghost. When you come and give your life to Christ, when you when you believe on His name, when He when He speaks to your heart, and you come and you say, Lord, I, I give my life to You. I believe on Your name. I, I believe He breathes on you right then. Mm -hmm. He gives you that Holy Ghost. Amen. And that's His Spirit. That's His Spirit that He gives to you. He gives you that freely. Nothing that you have to do. You don't have to get up here and uh, throw your money and I'd offer and plead. I, I, you don't have to throw money and offer and plead. You don't have to pick a guitar and play a piano. You don't have to get up here and turn around seven times and jump up and hook the heart. All you got to do is say, Lord, I believe. Amen. There's not a specific, uh, there's not a specific prayer that you have to pray. Amen. All you got to do is believe. Amen. I knew as a child when I had come, uh, you know, I, I grew up uh, 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 as a preacher's kid, and I've heard many of testimonies. I've heard many of things, and I've I've tried to think. Well, when the Lord tries to, uh, when the Lord speaks to my heart, I'm going to try to be ready and uh, say the right things. Uh, but when the Lord called uh, uh, on my heart and I was in turmoil and my heart was in turmoil because 
There's a war going on inside of me. I felt the devil saying, uh, you better just hang on. You better not go. Uh, uh, people make fun of you. Uh, or you say, well, uh, uh, you, uh, you're just a good kid. You don't need to go down to that altar. Uh, but the Lord was saying, come. I love you. Won't you just yeah. come? Amen. Boy, I tried to rip all that bitch and I knew, I knew I had to go. And I, the devil said, well, what are you going to say when you get to her? What are, what are you going to say when you get to her? I said, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to say. But all I know is if I could just get to her. Yeah. If I could just get to where yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. was, it, it, it ain't the bench that's got the power in it. To, uh, but when you feel that draw of the Spirit of God, wherever it may be, yeah. it may not hit you this morning in church. You may get home uh, and you feel that drawing power of God come to your heart. Uh, wherever that Spirit of God leads you, whether it's a stump in the woods, uh, whether it's your couch, which, uh, whether it's your bed at home, uh, no matter where it's at, the kitchen table, uh, it's uh, it's yeah. not this bench. Uh, God's everywhere. Go. Wherever yeah. God's leading you uh, in your heart, uh, you don't worry about what you say. You just go to that drawing spirit. Right. And all I knew to say was, Lord, save me. Amen. And that's all it took. I don't believe that. I don't believe I had to say a thing. Yeah. But when I, when, I, when I made that decision in my heart, when I, I believe when I stood up, I believe that that was, I, get, uh, I think that was, uh, I mean, you know, I know. I don't have to say. I know when I stood up, that was my decision to follow Christ. Amen. I think about that little song, I have decided to follow Jesus. When you make that decision in your heart, I have decided to follow Jesus. I'm talking really making that decision in your heart. I believe He comes into your heart and saves you right there. Amen. And once you're saved, you're always saved. I believe that in my heart. He finished it for you. He done all what He done. That way all you had to do is say, Lord, I believe. Amen. And that was it. That's all you had to do. And from there on out, He, he does the rest for you. I believe you know, I, I believe we're children for the rest of our lives. Yeah, you know, I believe that. There's you know, we might grow up in this in the scriptures, we might learn and we might grow in the scriptures, but I still believe we're just a bunch of kids running around, ain't we? We're still we still have to hold Jesus' hand. Amen. Every time we think we're just grown up and say, Lord, I've got this, we fall and get and scuff our knee, don't we? But the Lord's always holding our hands. He's always gonna be our daddy. He's always going to be holding our hands. And that's a promise He gave us. Many promises He gave us. He promised that He'd come. You know, in the Scriptures, all those in the book of Isaiah and all, all the way from Genesis, it foretold His coming. It was a promise. He come. He done exactly what it was fulfilled. And I love in the Scriptures when He said that it might be fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled. That's just, that's just reassurance when we read the Scripture saying, He done that for you. He, done, he promised that. You remember, He promised that. He just done it for you. Amen. And it's, it's about that it might be fulfilled, that he, He'd give us peace and joy and happiness. And that don't just start when we die and go to heaven. It starts right now. When we get saved, right. I believe it starts right then. Amen. Eternal life don't just happen when we hit the grave. Eternal life happens when we when we get born again. Amen. And that don't mean that you know Nicodemus saw how, how would I return in my mother's womb to be born again? It's spiritual. Amen. And you feel that you may maybe you're here this morning, you just don't fully understand what preacher, I just don't understand what you're talking about. It's it's, it's a foreign language to me. When you feel that drawn spirit of God. You know, like the disciples, they just didn't understand, even though it's right there in front of their face, they just didn't understand. But when Jesus came and He said, Peace be unto you, and they realized who it was, they believed all things. They remember. And that's the way it is. When we come and we say, Lord, I give my life to you, He'll reveal all that to you. He'll reveal it to you. You just look. You just, you just be ready. Seek His face. You just be looking for that drawing power of God. 
And when you do, you don't wait. You don't. Uh, there'll be two voices there. One saying, come. And one saying, hold on. But you better not hold on because He don't give us a second chance. No, when, that, when that time comes, when His promise that He comes again, and He comes and He blows it, when the, the trumpet's blown and we go into heaven, whether we're, whether we're dead and gone and we rise up from the grave or whether we just rise up when we hear the trumpet, and time shall be no more. There'll be no second chances. There'll be no, oh, hang on, Lord, I ain't ready yet. Uh, uh, that, that'll be time. There shall be no more. There'll be no more chances. Amen. Praise God. He's gave us this grace time. Yeah. He's gave us the time of patience. Uh, I, I praise God that He didn't just give us 2,000 years. Uh, I praise God. I believe, I'm so, so thankful He didn't just give us the 2012 when we all thought uh, uh, that time would be no more. Praise God uh, that He's given us another day uh, uh, that we might bring our loved ones in, that we might be saved. But if you're here this morning, you need, if you feel that drawn spirit of God, you better not wait for me to sit down and shut up. Uh, you better just come on now. Don't wait for me. Uh, uh, don't wait till you get home. You come now. I believe that's all that's on our heart this morning. Uh, I just want to do what the Lord will have us to. But if they'll come get a song of invitation, uh, 